Emotions, the things that can quickly wreck our lives. Let's listen to Minister Ashley as she explains how we can capitalize on these feelings. Fix your gaze. Isaiah 26 and 3 in the Amplified Version says, You will keep in perfect peace and constant peace those who are... Oh, the ones who mind is stand fast, steadfast, that is, committed and focused on you in both inclination and character because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. This is what I call a conditional promise. It promises that you will keep in perfect and constant peace. If, <laughs> if your mind is steadfast, if you're committed and focused on the Lord. You ever been in a car driving, and I've taken a lot of road trips in my life, so these roads are long. And, but you know what? It's on, on the side of you, it be cows. And every time, and I can see cows here. We go to the farm and all that stuff. My son loves it. But it's something about seeing a cow in Oklahoma that is just like, oh, my gosh, it's a cow. So if you're driving on this, in, on this road, I drive like this. If you're be driving on the road and you're looking over to the cow, at the cows, and you look a little bit too long, and next thing you know, the only thing keeping you from come, going off the side of the road is the grace of God. You're, you're, you've drifted because you've lost focus because you're supposed to be making sure, let me make sure that I get, I get here to my destination safely, but it's a cow. <laughs> but it's a man over here with these financial problems. Oh my gosh, you're, you're drifting. You're drifting. We are called to focus on the Lord. And I'm, I, I have to tell even myself this because I get really hard on myself. It is nothing wrong with experiencing negative emotions. We see in the Bible when Jesus was here on earth, he got angry, he was jealous, he flipped tables. Like, all these things. He, he was flesh. There is nothing wrong with negative emotions. But it's about what you do with them. And you can, have, you can have anxiety, you can have stress, you can have pain, you can be weary, you can feel like, you can feel down. There is nothing wrong with that. We need to stop walking around, oh, how are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you? Really? It's nothing wrong with being down. But it's a problem when we live in it. Yeah. It's a problem when we choose to make our home in these things. An exchange needs to happen in our focus. I want to leave you guys with a couple. Just it, when in your moments of anxiety and anxiousness, tell yourself that you are appointed by God to bear fruit. You can exchange your disappointment for delight in the Lord. Exchange your hurt for confidence and security in who our Father is. Exchange your inadequacy feelings of knowing that you are fully known by the Father. When you feel shame, know that you are sanctified and set apart. And trade your weariness for oneness with the Lord. There is a heaven, re heavenly remedy for every earthly problem. Amen. Psalms 919, it says, If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward, with, I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. And I love that God, he said, I will reward them with a long life and give them salvation. And that was a promise. These are words from the Lord. It's a promise. But you know what he also promised? He promised there would be evil. He promised there would be plagues. He promised that it would be lions and cobras and some fierce lions too. He promised that all of these things, all of these just horrible things, will, they will come. But when they call on me, I will answer. When they call on me, I will answer. I love that the word says that the fervent prayers, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We can't just pray on Monday and be mad on Friday when it don't move. When Monday was the only day that we prayed about it. I remember when I first started here, um, uh, our worship team, it was just three of us rocking it out. <laughs> it was just three of us. We'll be up there, all day, okay, holding, holding it down, pulling the spirit of the Lord here. He was right here. Um, but we would have these things where we would just kind of check in with each other. And I remember expressing, like, my battle with anxiety because that's something I'm telling you, like, we working on it. The Lord is working on it. And I'm working on it with the Lord. Um, but... <clears throat> 
Pastor Jordan, he was telling me to think of clouds as a thought, as thought as, or think of thoughts as clouds. It's a cloud over your head, and you got to catch it before it lingers. You got to catch that thought before it lingers. And I can say, um, I, I stopped catching. My arms was getting tired for a long time. My arms got tired. And that's when, <laughs> that's when you call for it, brother. You call for it, sister. Don't just sit in defeat. And that is what I, if there is anything, any one thing that I can leave with you all today, and that's don't sit in defeat. You don't have to sit defeated. You don't have to sit being trampled on. You do not have to sit in these things. And though a condition might change or might not change, though a situation might not change, things still might be a little iffy. The money still might, might be funny. They still might not get you. The boss still might not like you. It doesn't matter what it is. You do not have to live a defeated life. But the problem is what you need to do is live in the Lord to live in the Lord. God wants us permanent residents of him. He doesn't want us time shareholders or to treat, a, treat them like we do in-laws and see them only on special occasions. He wants us permanent residents of his grace, of his peace, and of his love. I remember when I first came to this church, I found myself, I was at the altar literally every week. I had, this, this got to come up off me. That was my thoughts. I don't care how crazy I look. This going to come off me and every single time. I was up here crying like a baby. Every single time. And I didn't care what nobody thought. I didn't care because I knew that right here, right here before God was something that I needed that I couldn't produce. I couldn't give to myself. I couldn't look for a man. I couldn't look for a dollar amount. I couldn't look for, I couldn't look towards anything in this world to give to me. So I <laughs> want to encourage you today, if there is something, if there is a need, if there is a lack in you anywhere, anywhere, that you know that this world cannot give you, if there is a peace that you've been looking for, if there is a hope that you've been looking for, a joy that you've been looking for, a miracle that you've been looking for, I don't care if you've been saved for two days or 20 years, find yourself on this altar before the Lord, and I promise he will meet you here. I promise he will meet you here.